Hello there, I'm Monica Reinagel, and you are listening to the Nutrition Diva Podcast. Welcome. A listener writes, I have recurrent problems with candida, or yeast, and I've seen articles stating that I should eat less sugar and avoid foods that contain yeast, such as bread. How accurate is this advice? I am so glad you asked. There is a confusing mix of true and false information about candida, diet, and nutrition. So let's sort fact from fiction. We talk a lot about the microbiome these days. This is the microbes that live in and on our bodies. Although most of the microbes in the microbiome are bacteria, a small number are actually fungi or yeast, and these are sometimes referred to as the mycobiome. Candida albicans is a type of yeast that is very commonly found both on and in the human body, where it generally causes no problems. Certain conditions, however, can lead to an overgrowth of this otherwise benign organism, and the resulting infection is known as candidiasis. An overgrowth can affect the mouth and the throat, in which case it's commonly referred to as thrush. This condition occurs most often in people with suppressed immune systems, such as premature babies, those living with HIV or AIDS, cancer patients, and others being treated with immune-suppressing drugs. Very rarely, it can spread via the blood to internal organs, and this can actually be quite serious. But by far the most common location for candidiasis is the vagina. So what are the symptoms of candida overgrowth? Candidiasis of the oral cavity results in a very characteristic white coating on the inside of the mouth, and this can be accompanied by redness and irritation. Candidiasis in the vagina causes a very characteristic discharge and localized itching. But candida overgrowth in the intestines generally has no symptoms whatsoever. Studies have found no link between candida counts in the gut and chronic fatigue, headaches, or any of the other symptoms that are sometimes attributed to candida. Also, just a word to the wise, breath tests are not a valid way to diagnose candida overgrowth. These diagnoses are confirmed by taking a fecal sample or swabbing of the affected tissue and then testing it for the presence of yeast. So what causes yeast infections? Antibiotic use can set the stage for yeast overgrowth by killing off beneficial bacteria that would normally hold candida populations in check. High estrogen levels can also be a risk factor, and that's why yeast infections are far more common when you're pregnant or taking hormones. And as I said, people with a suppressed immune system can also be more susceptible to yeast overgrowth, as are those with diabetes. But apart from these more obvious risk factors, some women just seem to suffer from more than their share of these uncomfortable infections. And so it's natural to wonder whether diet and nutrition could possibly play a role. And as this listener discovered, you'll find lots of advice on the internet for anti-yeast or anti-candida diets. The most common advice is to limit sugar and carbohydrates, avoid yeast-containing foods, and increase your intake of probiotic foods. So let's take these one by one. Does a high-carb diet cause yeast infections? As I mentioned before, people with diabetes are at higher risk for yeast infections, especially if their diabetes is poorly controlled. And that might suggest that high blood sugar levels encourage yeast growth, but this hasn't been proven. Yeast organisms are generally not in your bloodstream, so it's not as if having extra sugar in your blood provides more food for the yeast and causes them to proliferate. In fact, researchers tested the effects of a high-sugar diet on the intestinal candida populations and found that the amount of sugar in the diet had very little impact on the amount of candida in the gut. Many so-called candida diets also recommend eliminating starches as well, and I was unable to find any research showing that cutting out pasta, bread, crackers, and other things made with white flour affects the frequency or the severity of yeast infections. That said, there are a lot of other benefits to limiting your consumption of both added sugars and refined flour. So will avoiding yeast-containing foods help prevent yeast infections? Probably not. 
The type of yeast that lives on your skin and sometimes causes infections is Candida albicans. The type of yeast used to bake bread and brew beer is called Saccharomyces cerevisiae, and it only rarely causes infections. If anything, having some S. cerevisiae around may help you keep your Candida albicans population in check. People with an allergy to yeasts or molds, which can readily be confirmed with allergy testing, should absolutely avoid foods made with yeast. However, yeast infections are not caused by yeast allergy. And then finally, can probiotic foods prevent yeast infections? There is some research showing that eating yogurt can reduce the proliferation of candida both in the mouth and in the vagina, and this seems logical. The beneficial bacteria in yogurt and other fermented foods may help keep the candida population in check. Probiotic supplementation during or after antibiotic use may also help reduce the risk of antibiotic-related yeast infections. Although probiotics or probiotic foods may help prevent yeast infections, they're usually not sufficient to treat one that's already underway. Fortunately, there are antifungal medications, both topical and systemic, that are very effective. And at least one study found that combining one of these antifungal therapies with the probiotic supplement can work even better. Look, yeast infections are pretty hard to miss. The symptoms are fairly obvious pretty unambiguous, and usually uncomfortable enough to get your attention. However, there are some practitioners out there who blame yeast intolerance or hypersensitivity to candida for a long list of vague symptoms, ranging from headaches to fatigue to muscle pain to depression. Some even claim that the vast majority of the population is suffering from undiagnosed yeast overgrowth. There is very little evidence to support this theory. It's possible that some of those symptoms might improve on a quote-unquote anti-candida diet, but this probably has more to do with reducing your consumption of refined carbohydrates and other processed foods than it does with your candida counts. If you suffer from frequent yeast infections, check in with a doctor to rule out any underlying causes such as diabetes or immune dysfunction. After that, reducing your consumption of added sugars and increasing your intake of yogurt and other probiotic foods might help, certainly can't hurt, and in fact, it's a good strategy for improving your overall nutrition. You'll find a transcript of today's show, along with links to the research that I mentioned, on our website at quickanddirtytips.com. And you can also search the archives for your nutrition questions. If you can't find your answer, email me your question at nutrition at quickanddirtytips.com or call the Nutrition Diva listener line at 443-961-6206, and your question could be the topic of a future episode. I also wanted to tell you about a special five-week program I'm offering this April on overcoming stress eating. Obviously, the last two years have been a uniquely stressful time, but the truth is that this has always been one of the biggest things that people ask me for help with. Stress will always be a part of our lives, but we can stop stress eating even when the stress doesn't stop. To find out more and to register, please visit wayless.life slash stress and use the code stresslessdiva, all one word, to save 40%. That's wayless.life slash stress and the discount code is stresslessdiva. Nutrition Diva is a quick and dirty tips podcast. It's audio engineered by Nathan Sems with script editing by Adam Cecil. Our assistant manager is Emily Miller, and our marketing and publicity assistant is Davina Tomlin. Morgan Christensen is our podcast and advertising operations specialist, and our intern is Brendan Pika. Thanks so much for listening. I'll see you next week, and until then, remember to eat something good for me.